What would happen if Francisco taught Buddhism? Von Dharma. Hello and welcome back to the Ace Attorney Marathon. Previously, we looked at the first game in the series, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, and the series finale of Pop Fizz Reviews. While it has problems, it's an overall well-made game and helps set up the foundation for an amazing series. After the first game did really well in Japan, selling over 40,000 copies, the lead developer, Shu Takumi, was asked to make a new game in the series and was told to write the script within two to three months. And Mr. Takumi just got back from a vacation, so yeah, no stress on his part. Mr. Takumi had a lot of work to do within those months, so did he pull it up? Spoiler alert, I think he did! This game is overall way better than the first game, but what makes it that way? Well, let's find out. Also, I'll be looking at the DS version and not the trilogy version since that's the game I have. Oh, and just like last time, I may spoil some parts of the game. Since this is the start of alternative reviews, the rating I'll give will be different as I'll be rating the game out of 10 instead of out of 5. Anyway, let's start this case. The first Ace Attorney may not have the most complicated plot in the world, but it was still a decently written one with lots of twists and turns that made it very unique for the time. However, Justice for All is when the series really started to get very interesting in terms of narrative. When we begin, it's been about a year since the last game ended, and Maya and Phoenix haven't seen each other for a while as Maya has gone back to spirit medium training. After a pointless first case, the real story begins in where Phoenix needs Maya's help in channeling the supposed victim of a supposed killer. Only for the suspected person to die, and the blame is put on mine. Again? Yeah! You wanna fuck y'all? Keep throwing y'all hats! Yeah! Just like every Ace Attorney game, two or three new major characters are introduced. This game's being Maya's cousin, Pearl, and Miles Edgeworth's sister, Francisca Von Karma. Pearl is the definition of adorable, and I found Francisca to be an interesting character. I know a lot of fans hate her, but eh, I tolerated her. She has a specific grudge against Phoenix, which is a thing for a few prosecutors in the series. The reason for this is that Edgeworth supposedly died in between the events of the first two games. So, so far, this seems like a great story. We got a good setup, some good characters, and some good drama. Do I have any problems with it? Yes, a lot, actually. Fun fact number one. Justice for All has several pop culture references, including Phoenix saying Zoinks in the fourth case, a reference to Scooby-Doo, and him saying I choose you, a reference to Pokemon. My first problem has to do with what I said earlier when I said Edgeworth supposedly died. This point gets mentioned a couple times in-game, and it can leave you wondering if what's going on really happened. Well, maybe not a lot of people because, well, he's on the front box art of the game, which I don't have because I only have the cartridge because I got it at GameStop. My point is, if Capcom really wanted to keep Edgeworth's fate a mystery until the very end, they did a pretty bad job at that. Another problem has to deal with the cases. There are four in total, and only two of them are noteworthy in any way. Those being Reunion and Turnabout, the second case, and Farewell My Turnabout, the final case. The last Turnabout is a really mediocre first case, and Turnabout Big Top is just uh, 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 uh. Annoying characters, tedious sections, and disappointment is what makes this case and this game my personal weakest story in the series. Not to say that it's bad, as there are a lot of standout moments. Reunion and Turnabout is pretty good, and Farewell My Turnabout is one of the best cases in the entire series with a plot twist that I saw coming, but was still effective in its execution. And Reunion and Turnabout is probably the creepiest case in the entire series. Oh man, I forgot Halloween's over. So while Justice for All stories personally a step back from the first game, and there's some huge problems, it's not horrible, as it has still has a couple of good cases sprinkled in. However, Justice for All still remains the weakest story in the trilogy in my opinion. Not much time happened between the release of the first Ace Attorney game and Justice for All. The time it took between this game and the first was a grand total of one year, so with that in mind, you may not think that the graphics would be enhanced a whole lot. And you would mostly be right about that. The game looks very similar to the last, almost to a lazy extent, but there's a couple of little changes to make it a little more different. Firstly, you know those opening scenes in the first game that show some kind of establishment of the case? Well, in this game, they got improved. Now there's much more going on, including more animation and more movement. Other than that, not much is different in terms of presentation from this game and the previous one. But if there's something I can say is different, it's the music. It is definitely an improvement from the last game, having more instrumental diversity, I think that's a phrase, and more song variants. My favorite tracks in this game have to be the Moderato Cross-Examination theme, that offended a lot of people I know, and Korean Village theme for being kinda relaxing and kinda creepy, just like the case it was in. 
fun fact number two. In some instances, when Francisco whips Mo in the third case, he will make several references to famous theme songs. One is the A-Team, and the other is the French Prince of Bel-Air. So yeah, the presentation. It's not too different from the last game, but it does its job well. Now, as for the gameplay, that's when the game really starts to get different. Justice for All, like its predecessor, is a visual novel, so you would think that gameplay would be the thing that the developers spend the least time on. However, in this game, they've changed up a lot of things that I think are very beneficial in the long run. For, for instance, instead of exclamation points being represented as progress, it's now being represented by a green meter in the top right corner of the screen. This would stick throughout the rest of the series up until Spirit of Justice, from what I've seen. Another thing that this game added was also what I think was the best. And that would be Maya's Magadama. In the first game, the ability to present evidence that contradicts the facts is only limited to the trial segment, save for one investigation segment. This time, however, they're not limited to just that. Maya's Magadama has the ability to see into a person's cyclops, which helps keep their secrets hidden. The more locks there are, the more secrets they have, and the more evidence you need to present. This really needed to happen, because it makes the investigation segments more tolerable. Another good thing about the Magadama has to do with the meter I talked about earlier. Just like last game, you may get some things wrong sometimes and lose a part of the meter. This time though, by successfully unlocking someone's Cyclops, your meter gets halfway refilled. Oh, and that's also that's something that changed. Unlike last game, your progress doesn't recharge when you just move on to the next part of the trial. The amount of progress will remain when you move on, so it's good to study that what the witnesses say and your evidence before you go presenting all willy-nilly. Fun fact number three. Juan Corda had his name changed to Juan Rivera in the Spanish version of Justice Crowd, because in Spanish, Corda means... Another thing I liked about the gameplay in this game is that it fixes probably the biggest problem from the first game. Throughout most of the first game, it was very unclear what I was supposed to be doing, and I ended up getting lost constantly and having to actually look up what I was supposed to do. In this game, that's not an issue. The areas you investigate are short enough but large enough for me to not get confused on where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to do, and the only time I had to look up the answer to something was with the trial segments, which I guess can be seen as a problem depending on the first game, but I only had to look up the answer on a few occasions, so it never really bothered me that much. Oh, instead of cases being three investigation segments and three trials, now there's just two of each. This really fixes the pacing problem present in the first game and makes each case not feel like a boring trek into Lawville. Now, if you've played the series, you'll know that some of these cases get long, but we'll get there when we get there. Overall, the gameplay is the best the series has got to up to that point, and this is getting better from there on out. While the story of Justice Brawl may be the personal weakest of the original trilogy, and honestly that's a bad sign since this is a visual novel, I still think this game is better than the first one. Justice for All is a great sequel because it added many new things that helped better define the series, was a step up in graphics and presentation, and had one of the most important cases in the entire series. It's not perfect, but this game was what I think the best step the series took and it's just an overall great game. I think I'll give this game an 8.7 out of 10. Once again, if you're looking to try out this game, copies for it are cheap on Amazon, or you could get the Ace Attorney Trilogy on the eShop. Personally, I'd go with the former. I'm alternative own, and I love step ladders. You know what I mean. Probably. Thank you all, good night. Be good to each other. Have a nice ride, huh? We'll see you at the coffee shop tomorrow.